Welcome back, everybody. The History Guy here. It's time to dive into Jackson's Valley Campaign, Battles of Cross Keys and Port Republic. I'm going to have ten brigades available to me for the defense of Cross Keys. And uh, here's where one of those decisions comes into play. Which way do I want to go with this? Do I take in my experienced brigades or do I take in some new brigades to try and build up some experience going into uh, the next major battles that are coming? In this case, because I don't want to add too many additional troops, I think I'm just going to keep what I have. I don't want to create a bunch of additional brigades and give him an excuse to uh, scale up his units. So, Snakefoot Brigade, we're going to do just enough to keep them from dropping below two stars. And we're going to throw these guys in here. Kemper, we'll just go. Rookie. Most of these units didn't lose a lot, so it's not going to cost a lot to replenish them. So we can kind of build up what we're saving for now. Tenacious Danes, of course, we're going to have to keep them at two stars, so we'll go right to about there. And we're buying some new weapons, so that's part of what's bringing up the cost on them right now. All right, now we're going to take in these two units of um, smoothbores. These howitzers here, I want to get something up to two stars. Uh, Maher's Napoleons are almost there. They're so close. We're going to go veteran because I want to keep that, um, keep them from dropping too much down. Actually, it looks like they did anyway. Um, oh, it's okay, it's Maher that's actually almost there. So uh, we've got six available to us here. That's going to be expensive. Um, actually, that's because I had to buy some. So we're going to go up to 14. That'll get us right there. Um, I've still got $33,000 and $13,000 available. So I'm honestly thinking that career point-wise, I may switch over to economy uh, just to get the discount because... Politics has given me more uh, gold and recruits, but I've got enough recruits right now. What I don't have is enough gold. Uh, so what I feel like I need to do is I need to bump up economy so I can start getting a discount to what I'm purchasing. And that will kind of level these out a little bit. So here we have it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and make sure I take supplies in. I think we should be good to go. Cross Keys and Port Republic were fought in back-to-back -back days. This was just part of probably the the brilliant, the most brilliant moment of Stonewall Jackson's career, right up there with the flanking attack at Chancellorsville right at the end of his life. So he's got about 24,000 men, 51 guns. He's going to outnumber me by about 7,000. Uh, but we're going to mitigate that by uh, our defensive position. Now here's the thing. This battle typically, at least I've found, uh, typically ends up becoming one of guessing where he's going to attack because he will use his numbers to his advantage and he's going to hit me on one of these flanks most likely because I've got to spread out so much. I've got to defend two uh, points that are in very different spots. So I'm going to anchor each one of those with one of my two star units. Which oh, There's the other one, Tenacious Danes right here. As well as one of the units of artillery. Now, my experience has been that the main attack tends to come up here on the northern end, but that doesn't that doesn't guarantee that's what he's going to do this time. So, we're just going to have to kind of guess and plan for anything. So, I'm going to like I said, I'm going to anchor the position with my two-star units right there at the center. He's going to have to cross the water. I will have the cover of the trees. I'm going to break off skirmishers from everybody just to give me maximum flexibility. Same thing over here. Now we're going to anchor this side, same thing, with a two-star unit right there in the woods, as well as artillery that I'm going to keep back just a hair. And hopefully they'll be okay firing from there.
I'm going to send a bunch of the skirmishers up to the north. I'm going to hold one brigade back from the main line just so I can plug them in somewhere if I need to. Put three brigades down here. I'm going to keep my supplies close to the main, uh, the strongest part of my line. And I'm just going to bring some skirmishers back in here. I just basically am building somewhat of a line, and then I'm going to wait to see what he's doing and then respond accordingly once I know. But I, I expect the main attack to come on this side. So much so that I think I'm actually going to send battle up that way. That, that gives me three brigades down here. I think that should be enough. Get some skirmishers down here on the wing. And then we'll see what he does. He doesn't have his full force on the field yet. He's got less than half of what I do. Now he's getting more. Now we're about even. Just about. Oh, he's way up there. Oh, he's they're coming in from that side. I got gotcha. you. Okay. So that's why he'll probably attack on this side, just because that's where his units are coming from. And hold battle back. Let's switch these guys out. I want the Snakefoot Brigade to be right here. Alright, so he's starting to probe my line a little bit. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna send two brigades up here with all these skirmishers. I just feel like maybe that gives me some flexibility to come down on top of him here. Okay, now he's got an advantage on the field. He's got me by about 6,000 men. And he is he does look like he's going to come at me from the top here. Let's send some more skirmishers up here. These guys may not even engage much, so eh, just in case, I'm going to send one unit of skirmishers more toward the center. Alright, let's kind of sit back and watch and see what happens now. I think he's waiting to get some more units into position before he attacks. So far so good. I'm going to wait and see what happens here though because if he pushes hard up on top, I'm going to be in trouble. I 
In fact, I think I may shift price up this way a little bit. One brigade all the way down here on the end. He's trying to hit me on both flanks. Smart, smart move. It's a pretty uh, expected tactic. Maybe he's hit me in the center too. So, really, main Union force is advancing. Okay, but where? It's got to be up here. We gotta back these guns back because uh, they've lost 70 men already. Two brigades down here now. So far so good all the way along the line. Everybody's inflicting heavy casualties while taking few. And that's what we gotta do when we're outnumbered. I can't get around his flank here because of these guys back here. That prevents me from bringing somebody up here on the side, but that's okay. It also means he's holding them back from being used in the attack. I wonder if I bring Kemper up just a hair, if he can start getting into these guys. Not advancing anywhere. Casualties thus far, about 1,400 for him. I've lost just about 250 men. Excellent. I'm gonna sneak the tenacious Dane skirmishers out for just a second. See if we can't get a volley into these guys' flank. He's going to probably turn those guys, though. That's what I would do. All right, we turned back one brigade here near the center. So far, I'm pretty happy with how this is going. We're holding the ground uh, fairly strong everywhere along the line, so there's no real weakness. Drove those guys back. These guys are going to come back for more. surprised he hasn't turned. He's just letting Tenacious Dane skirmishers just pick him off. And these guys aren't moving. Gotta use your numbers, man. You're not using your numbers. I don't mind, but I'm just surprised. Wow, look at the Snakefoot Brigade skirmishers. 363 kills, 14 deaths. I need to move Timony up a little bit though so he can get on the action. I wonder if moving up Stuart Skirmishers is going to provoke a response here. 
These guys are being hit by everybody. All right, we got an ammo issue here. Ammo issues up here too. Ah, oh boy. Okay, you know we got to start with the uh, start with the infantry. Got to get them resupplied first. That's going to become a problem. Right, I'm going to drop those guys back. They're just drawing fire unnecessarily. There we go. Get the, get the supplies out in the open so they can move a little faster. He's bunching up right in here now. If I can throw this guy's back one more time, I'm going to move Kemper's brigade up. Try to hit him. Alright guys, supplies coming. Oh, here he comes. Okay. Maybe. Slowly. Get another unit up on the on the line here. Oh man, there we go. That's where it's happening. We're gonna move Kemper up too. So they drove Stewart off, but I'm okay. pause for just a second here um, first of all look at the uh, casualty situation 4,000 for him about 1,500 for me and it looks like he's finally making a move down here Colonel Timoney killed All right, we've driven off the center, that attack that he tried to make there. I'm going to go ahead and back Kemper off now. I don't want to shoot it out with some skirmishers. Good day for the Tenacious Danes. 313 kills, 14 deaths. And when you add what their skirmishers have done, another 245 kills and 32 deaths. I know historically there weren't too many Danish Confederates, but making a name for yourself so far in this campaign. We'll start getting some more two-star units soon, and I'll start getting those other named brigades in there for the other folks. an hour to go. We gotta come back down and supply the other side. Just 
Snakefoot Brigade, over a thousand kills, just 152 deaths. Nicely done, boys. There we go, we've routed his extreme left. Timony was drawn, uh, driven back, but that's not a big surprise since he lost his commanding officer. All right, overall, with an hour to go, we're now at um, almost inflicted 6,000 casualties, lost about 2,200, so about 3 to 1 again, which being outnumbered, I will take that every day of the week. So just about even the odds. He's only got about 2,800 more men than me now. He started out with about a 6,400 man advantage. My center is my only real concern right now. Let's move Kemper up. Stewart. 651 deaths, but also almost 800 kills. Snakefoot Brigade, 1,400 kills now. Been pretty quiet for the Tenacious Danes. Let's change that. We'll bring them out in the open here and start hitting these guys. There's a unit of skirmishers behind these guys, but I can't quite get to them. There they are. Alright, Snakefoot Brigade skirmishers, we need to retire them before we lose them. They're down to just 105 men, but they've got a ton of kills. Don't fire. Don't fire into me. Hit them before they fire. There we go. back. This one's over. Just a matter of mopping up now. Alright, alright. Careful, tenacious Danes. We've got a brigade that has reformed behind us here. Preston back up. Get our ammo down here, get these guys resupplied. And then we'll just hang on till the end. guys were about to wrap. Got a little bit of a problem on my left turn, or my left turn, my left hand side. That's an ill-advised charge there, Gordon. 
Look at that, Snakefoot Brigade, you are approaching 2,000 casualties inflicted at just 257 deaths. This is a way bloodier battle than I expected it to be. Alright, let's wrap it up. Okay, and the final totals. Outnumbered by 6,000, but look at that. 3,900 losses on my side, five guns. Uh, inflicted just about 10,000 casualties. A little better than two to one. I'll take that being outnumbered as I was. I rescued my two Napoleons that I had lost. Uh, rescued about 1,000 guns. Captured some Harper's Ferry 1855s. That's nice. I'm actually starting to capture some decent weapons that I can actually use here. So let's see what that puts us in position for going in. Oh, the Homeland Defense Cross. All right, so as I said, that point's going to go into economy. Get a little discount going there. Let's take a look and see. He got another 7,000 men, so he's up to 81 to 86,000. Let's see what Port Republic looks like. So this is an assault of nine brigades, but only against 14,000 men. So um, once I get these guys built back up, I should be in a decent position. I'm probably not going to take any artillery into this one. All right, so we've got ourselves a two-star artillery unit finally. Hmm. All right, so that one's going to become our uh, our first unit that will we're we're going to deal with that later though because we're not going to take them into this next battle. Let's go ahead and get everybody replenished. Uh, just looking at the totals here, Snakefoot Brigade, twenty eight hundred kills at Cross Keys with a loss of four hundred men. That's the power of those two star units when you start getting them in, into battle. There we go. These guys are darn near at the two-star level, so I'm going to go ahead and just keep them with veterans just so they we can get them leveled up going into the next big battle. Same here. Let me take a look for a second here, what we can spend reputation on. I love these 10-pounder parrots, but I'm just not quite ready for those yet. Right, I'm going to wait one more battle before we worry about that. Sir, yes, sir! Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Tenacious Danes. Nice day for you as well. 773 kills, only 90 losses. They were down on the right side, weren't nearly as heavily engaged, but still performed admirably. That's uh, kind of expensive. We're going to have to go go the cheap route there. We've got a lot of Brigadier Generals here. We should be starting to get some Major Generals soon, I would think. Uh, we don't have enough of those Palmettos to go around. So we're just going to go up to 1,500 here. Um, so, And we can do one more Brigade of Infantry. And we're just going to give them the Reboard Farmers. Get a lieutenant colonel. So this is what it's going to look like going into Port Republic. It's going to be 17,700 assaulting a force of 14-2. Uh, Not going to take any guns. I'm just going to get in there, do the assault, 
and hopefully take things down. So, uh, But I'm going to think about that a little bit until the next day. I'll think about what I want to do with that battle. But that's what we're looking at. As always, I welcome your comments, your questions, your observations, any and all things you have to say. What could I have done differently? What should I have done better? Uh, what did you like? What did you not like? Use the comment section below. If you are new to this series, the link is below to the very first video in this series, uh, as well as a link to where you can buy the game for yourself. I highly recommend it. One of the best strategy games I've ever played. I've really been enjoying it. Um, so thanks a lot. Hit that thumbs up if you would, and we will see you again soon.